You said that basically it's it's not harmful. Uh, what about the the smoking element of it? I've written a paper that was very popular and all around the world on the difference between tobacco smoke and cannabis smoke. Mm -hmm. What's been demonstrated now is not just you know what I do is I compiled existing data. This was back in uh, 2005, but now there's even more data that verifies my suppositions at that time. Number one is that cannabis smoke does not cause lung cancer. Tobacco smoke does. The difference is the pharmacology of the compounds in tobacco versus the compounds in cannabis. Cannabis directly has anti-cancer activity. It kills a variety of cancer cells, including lymphoma, leukemia, skin cancer, melanoma, breast cancer, prostate cancer, glioma, brain cancer. You know, in a variety of experimental situations, some of these things have been, are starting to be now examined in human clinical trials. You always start with animals and tissue culture experiments where you don't have to do horrible things to people like get them stoned, right. you know. So the, the science is exploding and anti-cancer properties of cannabis are very, very profound. Not only does it directly kill cancer cells, but significant strong evidence shows that it should inhibit metastasis spreading of the cancer by a variety of biochemical means that are inhibited by the cannabinoid system. So, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer here that somebody who has cancer, they're typically depressed. Well, cancer, cannabis is an antidepressant when taken in the right doses. Too much is, making, is not good, too little is not enough. It's a right dose, all right? Um, which you can find for yourself because it's a non-toxic compound. You know, you take too much one time, you take too little, you learn. Nobody wants to get too high. That's a general rule for pot, all right? You like to get high enough that you're feeling good. You don't want to feel bad. You, you take too much, you feel bad. Right, right. Yeah, in general, it relieves anxiety. It promotes sleeping. It's a pain reliever for chronic pain especially. Uh, you know, it does all the things that you need if you're, on can if you're a cancer patient. You know, what the government house is, the anti-nausea properties. Well, that's insignificant, essentially, compared to the fact that it's killing cancer cells. Right. You know, and that's neuroprotective so, and cardioprotective. So a lot of times when you're getting a variety of treatments like x-rays or a variety of chemotherapeutic agents that can damage the heart, the cannabinoids protect against that. Mm -hmm. So every way you look, you put the story together and it says, hey, everybody should be using cannabis regardless of what treatments you're using. This is probably going to be good for you on a variety of levels. Now, when you say using cannabis, is, uh, are there um, benefits to, say, um, ingesting the raw plant? Yeah, actually, some of the doctors in California now are just uh, feeding their patients leaves, really? depending on, because you see, the plant has so many different compounds in it that are bioactive. You know, we have about 65 different cannabinoid compounds, some of which get you high, some of which don't, but they have some structural relationships, all right, so that classify them as cannabinoids. Then you have a variety of other compounds, flavonoids, terpenoids, which kind of cannabinoids are a subset of that have a lot of biological properties in terms of pain, depression, immune modulation. So if you look at things like uh, autoimmune diseases, they also have in general a common characteristic in that the immune system is acting in a overly pro-inflammatory mode in whatever area of your body is coming up with this autoimmune disease. So it could be arthritis, it could be diabetes, it could be Crohn's disease, you know, it, it could be multiple sclerosis, it could be ALS, you know, lupus, all of these diseases, even though they are impacting the body in slightly different ways, they have a common underlying imbalance, and that is pro-inflammatory, a pro-inflammatory imbalance, and the way your body naturally balances that imbalance is with your endocannabinoid system turning on anti-inflammatory properties. So if your body has been selected to use that process, isn't it kind of a no-brainer that we should try that? You know, the way our existing laws are, even though we have legal medical marijuana in this state, and I'm a legal medical patient, it's like the last resort. That's backwards. It should right. be the first resort. Or they'd rather give you um, a synthetic variant like Marinol or something? Well, even that is very limitedly used, and it costs you know, $1,500 a month. They'd rather you use pharmaceuticals that the pharmaceutical company has spent a fortune to develop, and in some cases they work great, but typically they are associated with a horrendous array of negative side effects. You know, read 